Brother Steve, would you come up and take these needs before the Lord and pray over the service? Another beautiful day today, and I think people, <coughs> saints I've talked to this week, I said they still, mine was still on the services last week. It's such a precious refreshing, and all the testimonies from Israel and things, and uh, the way the Lord moved upon us, it's uh, still on our minds, and we just come here expecting what God will have for us today, and see these things of life that get us down, and they need our prayers, but we pray that the Lord will give them peace, and touch their bodies and circumstances of life and and we just keep on moving closer to him heavenly father lord god almighty we thank you and we praise thee for all that you do for us my god heavenly father you created us from the dust of this earth lord and you give us life lord and you give us the opportunity to have life more abundantly father lord that we may live with you for eternity my father thank you for that my god Lord, your plan is perfect in every way, Father. And Lord, there's nothing we could say. We can't say enough to thank you, my God. Lord, you've made a way for all things. You've made a way for our healings, Lord. As fathers, you've heard the request that's on our hearts. Lord, you see these situations of life that the devil would come against our bodies. Lord, you see each one, Lord. I lift them each up, Lord, that you would touch them, heal their bodies, Lord. Father, just move upon them in every way that is good to thee, O God. We pray that thy perfect will would be done in all cases, Lord. Father, be with this service. Be with Brother David as he bring forth the singing, Lord. Be with all the musicians, I pray. Lord, be with Brother Allen as he bring forth the message that you've burnt within his heart, my Lord. Give him boldness, Lord, to speak thy word, to speak thy truth, to speak against error, to speak correction if necessary, Father. Lord, may you give him a peace behind the pulpit, Lord. Father, he'd give the words of life to us, Lord. And Father, may we believe on every word that comes out of thy servant's mouth, we pray, O God. Reveal it to our hearts, Father, that your anointing may come down and touch us, we pray, O God. Father, we lift up Israel, my Lord. Be with her, give her strength, Lord. You see all things that come against her. Everybody seems to hate Israel in this day and hour, Lord. We are thankful for the love you put in our hearts for her, my God. We pray for peace in Israel. We pray for peace in Jerusalem, my God. Lord, we pray for those two prophets that will soon be upon the scene. And all the saints that will listen to their words. Lord, may thy perfect will be done. Without a shadow of a doubt, Lord, we are now another day closer to bearing your great arm for Israel's sake, Lord. And what a day that will be. Father, have thy perfect way in all things. Be with us now, Lord. Let thy perfect will be done. In that precious name of Jesus Christ we ask. Amen. He is my everything. He is my all He is my everything Both great and small He gave His life for me Made everything Every 
got so much to thank Him for. Oh yes, I've got so much to thank Him for, so much to praise Him for, you see. He has been so good to me when I think of what He's done and where brought me from. I've got so much to thank Him for. Amen. Y'all may be seated. I just ask that y'all remember me in prayer. I'm, my throat is just kind of fighting it today too. So, um, Brother Dwayne, would you have a song this morning? And then after that, Sister Melody. Good to be here. Yes, amen. Amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. But now I'm found was blind But now I see T'was grace that taught my heart to fear First, believe through me, the dangers tall and snatched. I have already become. brought me safe thus far and grace will take me home when we been there ten thousand Shining as the sun We'll have no less day to see Our God praise than when we burn Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once 
world lost But now I'm found Was blind But now I see Through many dangers Toils and snags I have already come What was it? Grace! Thus far, and will be grace that will take us on. Thank you, Lord. Through many dangers, tolls and snares. What was it? What was it? When I was driving down the road to sleep, what was it? It was grace. Amen. What was it when, he, when I was driving down the road running 100 miles an hour? It was grace. That's all it was. It was grace looking after an old boy like me. And what about all the times that I didn't know about that he protected us? What about those times? His grace. Just think about it. that would protect me. His grace that would lead me to a place like this. Right. Brother David, His grace. Because it's nothing that I've done. Because I'm not that smart. His grace that leads me. And His grace will lead us on. Thank you, Brother Dwayne. All right, Sister Melody. And Sister Doris, would you have a song this morning? Bye. 
All right, Sister Doris. And then Sister Glenda, would you have a song? Yeah. Is Sister Lori here? No, okay. for me I've been coughing and allergies or something there's an army of the Lord with strength today and it holds the power of evil at bay but if the coming of Christ Jesus isn't soon they will try again to bring the church to doom. But no government can break it and no evil power can shake it for the spirit of the Lord has been its day. On a rock he said it built it and the gates of hell came tilted for his coming. So my erring neighbor, if you need a friend, choose the church of the truth and go on in. Until the moment of the rapture does arrive, by the grace of God and Jesus she'll survive. But no government can break it and no evil power can shake it for the spirit of the Lord has been its stay. On a rock he said it built it and the gates of hell came tilted. He's coming to remove it right away. All right, Sister Glenda and Brother Kevin, would you and Sister Sandy?
Sister Sandy, Brother Kevin. Tim, would you have a song to that? Her arm is uh, healed back together, and she still has a cast on it because the doctor was afraid to not put something on it being so freshly uh, bonded. So, but her her mood and her outlook is drastically changed, and I just thank the Lord for that.
Alright, please. times there is a famine across the land in which I dwell. I know there's a mountain where blood from his side fell. And the blood became a fountain, the fountain of living will. In a dry and thirsty land, I know where there's water. In the burning desert sand I know where there's water And there's a place where I can go Where the living waters flow To refresh my weary soul I know there's water this world takes my strength until there's nothing left and it's a hard press battle to fight it by myself so when the times I'm weak from this journey I am on there's a wellspring that I drink from Falling from the cornerstone In a dry and thirsty land I know where there's water In the burning desert sand I know where there's water and there's a place where I can go to the living waters flow to refresh my weary soul I know there's water this world takes my strength until there's nothing left and it's a hard press battle to fight it by myself so when the times i'm weak from this journey I am on there's a wellspring that I drink from it's falling from the cornerstone 
in a dry and thirsty land. I know where there's water in the burning desert sand. I know where there's water. There's a place where I can go, where the living waters flow, to refresh my weary soul. I know there's water to refresh my weary soul. I know there's water. Thank you. All right, God's leaders.
turn it over to the preaching of the word. We thank all the singers and everybody that sang this one. Praise the Lord this morning. Good to see you. Everybody happy? Well, good to be happy. I thank each one of you for being here. <clears throat> we have some visitors that we want to acknowledge, so appreciate you being here. And just appreciate the Lord this morning and for our brothers and sisters and Good to see Sister Vanessa back after her operation. It's good to have people to pray for you whenever you are in need of prayer, and we all need prayer, but whenever something of a nature happens to us that we need a touch of the Lord, it's good to have brothers and sisters that know how to pray. So we thank the Lord for that this morning. Let us just pray at this time. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, that you are so gracious unto us, that you help us whenever we don't really know what's coming or what is coming our way in any way. But, Father, you know we're your children, been called out to be children of yours. We thank you for that. We thank you that one day that you knocked on our doors. And uh, we answered the call, and here we are today. Here's my brothers and sisters, as well as those out in the lands of where that they are uh, people that are listening, and watching, and waiting, listening to truth. Lord, we just see the tragedy around the world in Nepal and all the other places, Lord, that in this nation, if all the things that are happening just lets us know we're at the end time. Because you said these things would come to pass. You said there would be earthquakes in diverse places. And Lord, we see this happening today and know that you're still God and that you still have the reins of everything in your hand. So we pray your blessings now upon your children, upon the needs of the family of God and pray for Israel today and for all that they are going through and pray for our own nation that Lord that you would wake some people up. Bless us now we pray and guide us in this service. May your leadership be felt May your guiding be, uh, be had in our lives. Thank you, Father, now. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Sorry that everybody has to move so much furniture when I preach. <laughs> it better be good. <laughs> thank you, Brother Bud, and thank you, Brother David. We're going to have a baptism this morning, so we want to remember that. Young man been coming here some time, so not even for a long time, but been coming here for some time now. I have uh, 
some things that I want to speak on this morning. And uh, just to bring us up to the time of the message that I'm on. Time is running out. Truly it is. We see all the dark clouds and things just just like an earthquake yesterday in Nepal. Here they had done, know there are over 2,000 dead and they don't know how many more. It's just a, some would call it a tragedy and it is a tragedy to those people. I think there's a couple America, Americans that were uh, climbing the mountain over there and their dead is maybe more. But you know, uh, man likes to risk things. And this, Mount Everest was, I think I'm right, a hundred miles away from where the earthquake was. And it just, part of it just caved in. And people want to risk their lives for to just show they can do it. But I never was that, as they call them daredevils, I never was that, that much of one. I guess when I was young and driving, I probably that for a while. But you know, uh, God called a halt on me one day. When I had almost run into Green River over a cliff, he said, don't do that no more. I just as plain as it could be, don't do that no more. So I never did forget that. I was 18 years old and thought I, thought I was a good driver. You may be a good driver, but then that don't have anything to do with God's definition of what we should be. Our lives is more than just pleasure this morning. Just having a good time. I, I believe that a person should enjoy life. I believe that a person should life. But then there comes a serious time. Whenever the world don't know that anymore. A certain fellow was killed up in Baltimore by, they don't know what means they're guessing at it. And uh, under the police care. Now then they rioted last night and looted. Is that peaceful marching? Tearing up stuff? People that were there watching a ball game couldn't even leave the park because it was shut down. And if anybody has a, has a right to march today, it's Christian people, but we're not because we are being ridiculed. We're being talked about, messed with, all of these things, but we take it because we are Christians up to a point. And whenever I say up to a point, the there is a point that you don't go beyond because our life is as important too. Thank you, Brother Bud. It's important to God. Those people that entered those arenas, there to give their lives. Their lives were important too and it left a mark. I read and 
in history, Western civilization, whenever the church started out in the second, second church age there in the Red Horse Rider, that as long as they were killing Christians, the church was growing. Which it said, uh, the death of the saints is the seed of the church. So, today we're not out here marching. We are looking for the coming of the Lord. That will, that will ease everything. That will take care of all the world's problems. Whenever he come back again. But it, it's going to ease the saints of God's problems whenever the rapture takes place. There is a rapture coming. Because there are different places in the scripture that God is, is going to hide his church away. Which means that he's going to take her home before that bad tribulation time comes, of which the preachers today don't know when it's coming. Pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib, they just trib. They have no idea of when that the Lord is coming. I'm not speaking of knowing the day and the hour, but I do know enough Scripture to know that He's going to take his church out before uh, before the tribulation comes. I've been thinking about something this week, and here we took the trip to Israel and had different ones to testify, and we've really been blessed for that, especially last Sunday night. And young people that stood up here I'd, I'd like to say something to the young people maybe maybe y'all could come up here young children 11 on down come, come on up here I'd like I want to say something to you all of you I'm not talking about just the ones that went on the trip I want all of you You can, st you can stand down there. You can stand down there. Now don't be looking to see if you're on the monitor. You. I want these young people to know that I appreciate them. I want to thank these young people that were able to go on the trip that the Lord done something in their lives. Last Sunday night, there's about four of them that just gathered around and just cried for at least a half hour. And but I want to say something to you that didn't get to go. You're just as important as the ones that did go. You young people, remember that. You're just as important. And God is desiring to do something in your lives at this young age. I hope that each one of you gets to go another sometime. But if you don't, it don't make any difference with salvation. God can give you that experience whether you got to go or whether you didn't get to go. You're just as loved because you didn't get to go as you were when you went. And God's limit is not to those that did go. Amen. Because you are at a young age that I believe God is speaking to your hearts. 
and don't care to express your feelings. Don't care to let God have His way in your lives. You're precious. You're precious to us. Some of you are younger. And Jesus took the little children whenever the disciples the disciples said no. Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me. And forbid them not. So today, young people, all of you, not just the ones who went to Israel, but all of you have a promise from God that God will do something in your lives if you let Him. You feel that. If you feel that, you let Him have His way in your life. I want you to know that you're loved and that you're cared for and that the church cares for you and we're praying for you. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Thank you. Thank you. You all can be seated now. I had to do that because um, I feel that maybe some might have thought, well, I didn't get to go to Israel, so the blessing not for me. It is. Don't ever be defeated by something that... Uh, or uh, And then there's from 12 on up. I won't have you come up here, but you are loved by this church. You're loved by this pastor. And I appreciate you. Well, I'll go into my subject at this time. I've been speaking more so about Israel in this because Israel has a great play in this end time. Because she has her land back, I, whenever we were in Israel, the guide said there's eight million uh, Jews in Israel and last I knew this six point something which seemed like a lot in a little land like that but then the guide said that and then I saw uh, some statistics this week where the, there are 8.34 million Jews there That's a lot of lot of people in that land, but this is not all that's coming back. There's still 1.5 million Jews in Europe. And Europe is hating the Jews. When I was growing up, up till I heard Brother Branham. I grew up in the Methodist church. I never heard anything about the Jews. I never heard anything about the promise about the Jews. Then whenever I begin to hear the, the truth about the matter, then I become interested in hearing about what God was going to do for the Jewish people in this time we're living in. And I I heard I, I looked on the uh, Root News and there's a article there about their holidays which come close together. 
Independence Day and Memorial Day. And they had an outburst of, of babies being born those two holidays in one hospital. There's 49 babies born in those two days. And this happened to be nine months after the war started in Gaza. There's 31 on Independence Day and 18 on uh, Memorial Day in Israel. And it, it just lets me know that God is in, increasing the population in Israel. I mean, they were astounded because there's so many in that one hospital. 31 babies in one day. That's a lot anywhere. There's being born. And then uh, they, were, they were astounded by it, but We have, the United States had an attorney general to bow out this week and another attorney general that was, took, took the place. And she, she is a, she's a black woman, the one that took Holder's place. And the ten Republicans voted for. But you know, the creepy thing is, five of them said they wouldn't voted for her if she'd been white. I mean, that's, that's creepy. We believe that God's children is black and white and red that he's got children and but when when do we show favoritism just because the color of someone's skin our our people that are in office today, you know why they done that? Because they were afraid of the public. Is the laws of America going to be judged just because of the skin color. I got brothers and sisters that I love very much, but I love you because of who you are. Because that you are Christians, children of God. We have them in different parts of the world. The Philippines, everybody in the bride is not white. <laughs> South Africa, we have some precious brothers and sisters there. They're not white. But... <laughs> But whenever I, whenever I talk to them, I'm not looking at color. I'm looking at character. I don't have to say these things, and maybe some would think I shouldn't say it. But I love my brothers and sisters today, whatever color they are, and whatever height they are, and how short they are, and... All in between. Right. 
I won't, I won't compromise the gospel just because of something. You had a, a white man or whatever he was. I can't tell what he is because he don't know. It may be Bruce Jennifer. He don't know what he is. We live in an hour of when that every, everybody is wanting to accept everything. And if you say anything about sin, that's what I'm talking about. If you say anything about homosexuality, then you, they're trying to put a law that's going to take care of you instead of taking care of the problem. Scott County up here. It's really the least county in the surrounding counties. Last count I had, they had 125 HIV cases. What are they doing? They're taking their tax money to take care of something should never have been. We'll get them needles. You think that's going to solve the problem? The problem is in here. It's in, in the head, in the mind of people that have lost their brain. You get on those devilish drugs, you're going to lose your brain. They call it being fried. This thing, I'm talking about the end time, this thing is going under. Yeah. Marijuana. They legalize it in in the capital. <laughs> Washington, D.C. There's already potheads there anyway. <laughs> Just made something legal of what was already taking place. They had Earth Day this week. Did you hear about that? They went to Washington, D.C. up there at the Washington Mall. And when they left, there's so much trash. Earth Day. Styrofoam cups and plates and scattered all over the place. Earth Day. I had a town one time. I've told this before. I went to see a sister in the hospital over there in, in Louisville over the Jewish hospital. I went to see a sister over there and I had that tie. I had a tie on said, this world is not my home. I had a map of the world and a couple women on the elevators I went up Oh, it was Earth Day. Is, are you celebrating Earth Day? This world is not my home. <laughs> I'm just a passing through. My prayer, treasures are laid up. Some more be on the blue, but I'm going to come back to rule and reign with you. It's the Lord. 
I get a little crazy sometimes. But just leave me alone. Let me live with it. I'm not trying to be a smart addict this morning. I'm not trying to upset somebody's apple cart. If you want to hear. president has been talking about Israel. About a, 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 a ran, Iran. He's been telling everybody that they have a year before they get the nuclear bomb. But he's admitted that he was wrong. It's two to three months. He cares nothing for Israel. They've said it. If you don't care for Israel, you don't care for this nation. What I'm saying is, is truth, but if I was running for office, I'd get nowhere. If you stand for truth, you're not going to be elected. out the Clintons has sold 20% of our uranium to Russia for three and a half million dollars to put in their pocket. Since President Clinton has been out of office, he's made over a hundred million dollars speaking. What? What's wrong with people's minds? Sell our nation out to Russia. Sell them our uranium. And the president and the cabinet all had to know about it before it could be signed. If you... If you've got hope in this nation, the way that it's going, you, you're going to sink with it. Right. I love America. This is where I live. This is where I want to live. But I hate to be sold out. And I hate for the nation to be sold out by people that don't really care. I'm going to familiar scripture. Matthew 24. I guess I've been there so many times that I can almost open my Bible and it'll turn there.
I've got a picture of the mosque. Your preachers today, some of your main preachers are saying, this will stay here and Israel will build her temple there. They're even preaching that Islam is the Antichrist. Said we used to think it was the Roman Catholic Church, but not anymore. Because they they say that the fourth horse rider, that fourth horse is green. And green represents Iran, or uh, represents Muslimism. They're, that's what their flags are, green. But it has nothing to do with that. That's not what it started out to be, and that's not what it's going to finish up to be. This is going to be gone. Why, you say, well, I don't believe it. You will. <laughs> it's going to happen. Follow, yeah, follow the news. Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. My they were so excited of what Herod had done. He had beautified the temple. That caught the disciples' eyes. But the disciples didn't have the Holy Ghost. Not at that time. But this is Jesus' last trip to Jerusalem. He wept over Jerusalem because he saw what was going to take place and it's here in his words. And, and Jesus said unto them, Say, See you not all these things, He's telling them, don't get your mind on this. And I'm saying today, don't get your mind on the world because it's going to pass away. He said, see you not all these things? A question. Verily, verily, I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. I wish I'd have had a picture of that. We walked where that took place. They have unearthed the stones. They dug them. They dug them out, but they left them where they were. And it's just a bunch of stones laying one on another. We walked on the street where Jesus walked. Whenever he was telling these things, and, uh, and the bridge or the arch that went over there, it's still one end hangs there enough and the other end is over here, but the arch is gone. Modern city in that day, and especially a modern temple, looked like it could have been saved. All that gold 
all that silver looked like it could have been saved. No. Because people had their eyes on the temple instead of God. I thank God for this place. It's a place that has stood for truth through the years and we still stand for truth and, and we're going to stand for truth and we're not going to let it, let it down. Well, you keep preaching like you're preaching, you're not going to have too many. Uh, there'll be enough. God won't be overstaffed in preachers and He won't be overstaffed in people. He knows who is bride. He's not after the world. He's not trying to convert the world. All that the Father hath given me, it's already a pre-planned thing. Will come. Hallelujah. I had these young people up here this morning wanting, wanting them to know that they are loved. A lot of them I've dedicated by just placing my hand over them and praying over them. Today, I see people that have gone through things. See people that have gone through things to bring them back to the Lord. God will just let you wander so far till He will get to the point and he'll say stop then it shows what's in us whether we stay or whether we walk away but I have to be like Peter was that day whenever whenever the 5,000 had walked away that had eat angel food Angel food one day, the next day they're ready to walk away. Because he said, except you eat the flesh of the Son of God and drink His blood. Which is, re which is represented in their communion when we take it. Because you've got to take on Christ. Take Him on. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You do that in baptism. Just as the one that's going to be baptized this morning. Whenever you take Him on, you take on the shame that goes with it. But you also take on the joy. Amen. I'm not trying to paint a bleak picture. It's only bleak when we make it to be. Verily, verily, I say unto you, there shall not be left one here, one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. They ramshacked that temple. There, then the disciples go ahead and ask him some questions. 
And as he said upon the Mount of Olives, of which that we were, when we looked over and saw the eastern gate, or the beautiful gate, which is called, looked over the valley there where Jesus was at. Where he sat upon the Mount of Olives and he talked to the disciples. If they'd stayed in Jerusalem, there'd never been a message got out. God even had to take some lives of some good men. Stephen. Whenever Stephen was killed, and it began to push out. And then especially when James was killed, then it began to go farther and farther because it took something to get them away from there. They had the Holy Ghost, but they weren't listening too well. We have the Holy Ghost this morning. We need to listen to what God talks to us about because He does still talk. As he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately. They didn't come with the crowd. Privately they came. Saying, tell us, when shall these things be? They're asking questions here and he's going to answer each one of them but he won't answer them in the in the way they they ask him tell us when these things shall be and what shall be the sign of thy coming he is coming Your church world is lost that today. They're too much interested in entertainment. The first thing they do whenever they build a big church, they put a, an arena in it. Sports arena. And then they put their cafeteria in there. Why not? That's the only food they're going to get. That long-haired mess comes out there, of which I get invitation every week. Let us come and show your young people how to how to worship. They're not, Jesus tells the disciples whenever he raised from the dead old fools and slow of heart, they're not even that. They haven't made that grade yet. The church world don't believe he's coming back. They don't believe in hell. I'm telling you the truth. They believe in the prosperity message. And they preach that and they put that in people's minds. Don't have Sunday night services. 
And the Wednesday night services they used to have is, is closed off. Used to have a commercial on hair stuff when I was a boy. A little dab will do you. It don't take much to fuel people's hunger today because they don't know that the real hunger is God. Jesus said, Blessed is he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness, for he shall be filled. That's not just talking about a man. They're talking about what we saw here Sunday night. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's talking about what the brother talked about the other Amen. night. Amen. Brother White. Praise the Lord. And Brother Kevin said, Where has he been? <laughs> People are sitting here with a testimony in their heart yes. that yes. just takes something to strike it a little bit, and whenever it's struck, then it manifests itself. Amen. It was there all the time. Yes. Just like he, like the song we hear, he was there all the time. He was there when I was growing up and I didn't know it. I didn't know truth. I grew up as a, a, as a Methodist. Whenever I heard Amazing Grace, which they sang a lot, it didn't mean nothing to me. One day... Brother Dwayne on an old assembly line, Norwood, Ohio, working for fisher bodies, spot welding. That's them spot welds. It'd hit oil and it'd go up and come right down on my head, and I could hear my hair singeing, which I couldn't do now. But. And I would, and I was, to myself, not to everybody. I began to sing, "Amazing Grace," the Lord. and all at once, then that sweet spirit began to speak to me. "Amazing Grace," how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. The Lord. I'm found. God found me one day. Amen. He brought me out of that place. He took me through Kentucky. Down at a place named Burksville, Kentucky. You know where that is, David? <laughs> And there I heard about a message. Praise the Lord. Nineteen sixty one. Been saved a couple of years. Nineteen sixty one. June and July, I heard seven church ages by the prophet of this age. I got right up on that tape recorder and I listened. And I couldn't take it anymore. I had to go be baptized. Praise the Lord. Because it is spoke to my heart. Father's not a name. 
Son's not a name. Holy Ghost is not a name. But in Acts 2.38, of which our brother will be baptized, it said, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Repent every one of you. Right. Right. That, that, that comes first. What is repentance? It's being sorry. For the life that you've lived. It takes away the excess. What I mean by excess is sin. I don't care to say what it is. It's sin. And that that is driving us inside, just like it was when I was 11 and 12 years old, I sat in that seat and that, or stood whenever the altar call was being made, and I heard, I could hear my heart beat in my ears. I didn't do nothing about it because I didn't know how. Nobody told me how. But I knew what it was. And I knew what was going on. The age of these young people that stood here Sunday night with joy in their heart to overcome them. Yes. Young people, listen. Don't let it pass you by. Amen. Grab hold. Sister Joan, that's right, isn't it? Get a hold of, get a hold of the horns of the altar, and don't let go. Tell us when these things shall be. What shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? Three questions there. Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Something I'd say, like to say right here, but I'll hold it up because it's not hardly time. But I will say this. If you want to look like the world, you won't look like Jesus. Amen. Because he's the same whenever you go out of this place as he is with me when you're in this place. Don't go up and down the highway fussing, biting, quarreling, all that goings on. will not strengthen your Christian life. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Some people thought, uh, think that that's some crazy person down here in Florida saying that he's Jesus. That is crazy. But this one comes and that one saying, I'm anointed.
but their words tell whether they are or not. Ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation. Now this is getting to be serious. Which, which happened in World War I a hundred years ago. Soon will be. Nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines. That's the truth. And pestilence. And earthquakes in diverse places. It says in one place, great earthquakes. Diverse places or different places. All these are the beginnings of sorrows. That sorrows for the world. Don't you think that in Nepal today that there's a lot of sorrow? <clears throat> one that this happened lately down in Chile. The one that happened a few years ago in Haiti. where President Clinton went and got a lot of gifts and all, which he stuck much of it in his pocket. Then shall they deliver you up. That's just talking about the, the disciples and people at that time. To be afflicted and kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Talking about the Jewish people. That has happened. It's over. It's going on now. In Europe and in New York. In Europe, they have advertisement on buses kill the Jews. They wanted to do that. The Muslim community wanted to do that in New York, but they become afraid to. Put it on buses, kill the Jews. Kill Jews. Hated of all nations. They're not writing. What are they doing? What's causing hatred? It's exactly what the Bible said. You'll be hated of all nations. Whenever I read Revelation chapter 6, starting in verse 9 there, where it talks about the Holocaust. Oh Lord, how long will you not revenge our blood? He said, wait a little longer. And he gave them white robes. They know who Jesus is today. The white robe was righteousness. I'm talking about the ones that were, it says under the altar, but it was in the midst of the altar, round about it. 
because the altar is below the dwelling of God and of Christ. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. That is what is going on today. The Bible calls them false prophets. I'm just reading the script. And because iniquity, lawlessness, hatred, insanity, Iniquity shall abound. It's not something going away. The love of many shall wax cold. Used to be some kind of a derogatory statement was made. You could see women blush. Now then the women on television don't care what they say. That's right. And Cincinnati Reds manager, 77 times he spoke a bad word, a devilish word in five and a half minute interview. Said he, he said, I apologize for the word I used, but the statement was still true. You vulgar man, you don't even deserve to be known. Don't lose your blush. Women sat on television with their legs crossed. But their dress comes all the way up to their behind. Shame on you! You pretend to be conservative. I used to think conservative meant something. Now then, it don't mean anything. You just well to vote for Democrat as you had Republican anymore in most cases. Because they don't care. They don't care for themselves. They don't care for this nation. And preachers won't say nothing about anything because they're afraid, afraid they'll lose their popularity in their congregation. I can't preach that. My people would leave. If you gain the whole world and lose your own soul, what has it proffered you? Right.
I'll read the rest of this and I'll close this out for this time. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure, endure though, yes. though it comes his way, yes. her yes. way, they still endure. Right. Just like you put heat to popcorn, it's going to pop. You hit, put heat to a Christian, they're going to they're going to rise. Rise to the challenge. We're not out here trying to make a mark for ourselves, but we're out here ready to defend what we believe. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. It's worth it all to be a child of God. Praise His name. Wonderful God. Precious Lord. Heavenly Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters. I thank you for the life that you've given us to live. Now I pray, Lord, for this one that is to be baptized. May, Lord, you fill him with your spirit. May you guide, I pray. Bless Brother Kevin as he baptizes him. Bless your people, Lord, as they've come here today to be a part of your family, Lord, as we see today you working in the midst of our people and of our young people. Bless your children now, we pray, and help us in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. May God bless you. You that are to be baptized, just follow Brother Kevin over this way through the video room. Let's stand, please. Brother David comes and sings for us. If you have a need today and want prayer, then you come.
son, so this is Michael Jr., <laughs> and Brother Ron and Sister Joanne's grandson. Praise the Lord, and we're just so happy for our brother here and for the family today. Our brother said he's felt it on his heart for some time, and I know he's been coming and attending his services, and the Lord's been dealing with him, and I'm thankful for that. Hey. And I just encourage all the young people today. Just look to the Lord. There is no hope in no other. Let us bow our heads and pray for our brother. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this young man that stands here today, Lord. Father, we just pray that you would bless him. Father, as you've dealt with him and you've spoken to his heart, Lord. And Father, he's repented of his sins. And Lord, now he stands here in this watery grave to be baptized for the remission of his sins. 
Father, may you lead and guide him by your spirit and keep your hand of protection upon him. Father, we know in the scriptures it says when the day of Pentecost was fully come that they were all with one accord in one place. And then suddenly, Lord, there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled the place, Lord, where they were all sitting. Father, I pray today, Lord, when my brother comes forth from this watery grave, yes. Father, may there be a sound that comes from heaven, Lord. May it enter into his heart, Lord. Yes. Thy Holy Spirit, Lord. Baptize him with it, I pray, Lord. Grant it to him, Lord. Bless my brother now, Lord, and lead him and guide him. We ask this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Hey. Brother Michael, as it is recorded in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38 and all throughout the scriptures, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of all of your sins. Hey. Hallelujah. Hey. Praise hey. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. <clears throat> oh, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Oh, I shall not be, I shall not be. Just like a tree that's planted by the water. Lord, I Just like a tree that's planted by the water, I shall not be moved. Oh, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the water, I shall not be moved. Well, some glad morning when this life is over, I'll, I'll fly away oh, to a land on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. Oh, I'll fly away, oh, glory. I'll fly away. Well, Shadows of this life have gone. I'll, I'll fly away. Oh, like a bird from prison bars have flown. I'll fly away. Oh, I'll, I'll fly away. Oh, glory. I'll, I'll fly away. Well, now we're 
if I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Well, now just a few more weary days and then I'll, I'll fly away. Oh, to that land where joy shall never end, I'll fly away. Well, you all remember the service tonight and come back praying. Brother Jerry, would you dismiss us in prayer? Thank you, Lord, that you brought to us. And Father, we just ask you to be with this young man, Lord. As he goes his way now. Just watch over him, Lord, as only I know you can. And Father, Father, for each and every one that was here this morning to witness this. Ask you to be with them, Lord, and just keep them safe upon the highways. Yes. Father, we ask you to return. Bring us all back safe tonight, Lord, to hear your message again, and may you anoint the ministry as he brings it. And Father, we praise you and thank you for all things now, your guidance and all things. And Lord, we just praise you for what you've done and what you're doing. And Father, we thank you for it now, Jesus. Amen. Amen.